pesky humans. Like the dinosaurs millions of years ago, humans are now the planet's super predator, and it's driving all other wildlife to take the night shift. UC Berkeley researchers analyzed previous studies that captured the 24-hour movements of over 62 medium to large-bodied mammal species in six continents. They found that human disruption made animals 1.36 times more nocturnal on average, meaning those that typically split activities evenly between day and night became 68% more active at night. Human disturbance in this case wasn't just limited to destructive behavior. Even activities like hiking, farming, or wildlife viewing evoked the same behavioral pattern. The consequences are potentially negative. Animals that lack the traits to thrive nocturnally become vulnerable to non-human predators, affecting their chances at survival and reproduction. Scientists have already noticed some of these changes. Coyotes in California's Santa Cruz Mountains have begun hunting at night to avoid hikers, foregoing their usual daytime prey of squirrels and birds for nocturnal rats and rabbits. Though more research needs to be conducted on the topic, it's important for humans to be more mindful of how we're impacting animal habitats and aim for coexistence. Ugh, people. Boys break into Czech Zoo and kill flamingo. A flock of flamingos at a zoo in the Czech Republic came under attack by a group of kids armed with rocks. On March 10th at the Jalava Zoo, three boys ages 5, 6, and 8 climbed over the zoo's fence and made their way to the indoor American flamingo exhibit. Once in, they gathered wooden sticks and baseball-sized stones and began hurling them at the colony of 60 flamingos. While being pelted with rocks, a 16-year-old male flamingo was then kicked by one of the boys, its leg broken. The boys ran off while the flamingo lay there with severed arteries and its snapped leg, slowly bleeding to death. Several other birds were left bruised, and one sustained serious but non-life-threatening injuries. Two of the boys were caught after being spotted on surveillance cams shortly after the attack. Local media reports the boys showed no remorse and are unlikely to face charges given that they are minors. Being mating season, the trauma suffered by the birds at this time is particularly problematic. The male bird who died had been a successful breeding piece for the zoo, fathering eight offspring. The zoo has valued his life at roughly $2,100, a cost the children's parents will likely be ordered to pay. The attack comes mere days after another zoo in the Czech Republic announced it would dehorn its rhinos to protect them from poachers, following the murder of a southern white rhino at a zoo in France last week. Who knew zoos would have to protect their animals from children too? As the old saying goes, sticks and stones may break their bones, but it doesn't take some kids long to become jerks. Russian police search for thugs who dyed a stray dog pink. A cruel prank has sparked outrage after a stray dog's fur was dyed bright pink in Russia. The incident took place in the city of Izvizvik in Russia's Udmurt Republic. Someone must have thought it would be funny to make the canine look fabulous. We're not exactly sure how the dog was dyed pink, but we imagine something like this may have happened. The poor dog was picked up by wildlife volunteer Vera Ivanova after reports about it appeared on Russian social media. Vera took the dog, who'd been nicknamed the Pink Elephant, to a local shelter. Vera says the dog seems fine, though it has been vomiting. She suspects the dog is vomiting because it was recently dyed. At the shelter, volunteers have been washing the dog to get the dye out of its white fur. Local police are now looking for the person who dyed the dog pink, and they could be charged with animal cruelty. Dying animals pink seems to be a thing in Russia. Last year, a Russian writer was falsely accused of killing her cat by dyeing it pink after photos of the animal appeared on social media. The woman really did dye her cat pink for a pink-themed party, but she didn't kill it. How about we hurl rocks at them to force them to jump? A 12-year-old female kangaroo in a zoo in southeastern China died after visitors had hurled rocks at her because of one thing. She wasn't jumping enough. According to Chinese media, the 12-year-old female kangaroo was not hopping enough to amuse visitors at the Fuzhou Zoo in March. So to make her hop, some made-in-China genius decided to hurl rocks at the kangaroo. And when zookeepers showed up to stop it, her left foot was already nearly severed. The zookeeper said he had tried to stop the crowd, but nobody in the crowd fessed up to having thrown any rocks. What? 
The kangaroo was later seen lying battered and hooked to an IV drip in its enclosure, and the poor thing later died due to internal bleeding. Veterinarians discovered after the autopsy that one of the stones had ruptured the animal's kidney. For unknown reasons, the zoo said they planned to stuff and display the dead kangaroo. This didn't stop these idiots from hurting the animals. A few weeks after the incident, a five-year-old male kangaroo luckily survived an injury caused by the same thing. The Fuzhou zookeepers stressed that these actions are against the rights of the animal and somehow visitors just keep hurting them. The zoo now plans to install more security cameras, hoping to prevent anything like this from happening again. Scottish SPCA mistakes harmless snake for green mamba and kills it. The Scottish Society for the Protection and Care of Animals is taking heat after it froze a harmless green snake to death in a case of mistaken identity. The snake was found on a cargo ship that had returned from West Africa on November 9th. Scottish SPCA workers were called in and captured the reptile, which they thought was a venomous green mamba. They moved the snake to their rehoming center in Drumbo in Aberdeenshire. But the closest anti-venom for a green mamba was in Bedford, eight hours away by car. And the workers could not find a reptile specialist who could take in the snake. So, due to severe health and safety concerns, they decided it had to be euthanized. In a freezer! Only after the poor thing died a horrible death did they realize it was a harmless green tree snake. It wasn't venomous and didn't even have fangs. PETA has, of course, criticized the SSPCA for their blunder, with Director Elisa Allen saying, If a snake must be euthanized, which means given a good death, the animal shouldn't be frozen to death. Major veterinary bodies, including the Association of Reptilian and Amphibian Veterinarians, said freezing was unacceptable. The formation of ice crystals on a snake's skin can cause acute pain. Scottish SPCA Chief Superintendent Mike Flynn said it had been an innocent mistake. He said the charity genuinely believed it was a green mamba. Teacher charged for feeding sick puppy to snapping turtle. An Idaho teacher is in hot water after allegedly serving up a sick puppy as a meal to a snapping turtle in front of several students. According to parents who found out, science teacher Robert Crossland from Preston Junior High School served the puppy up to the turtle on March 7th. The turtle was then seized a few weeks later by state officials who euthanized it because it was an invasive species. Crossland was charged last Friday with misdemeanor animal cruelty. He's now facing up to six months behind bars and a 5,000 US dollar fine if convicted. Petitions have been started on both sides of the argument, those calling for Crossland's dismissal and others supporting the teacher. PETA even came out to blast Crossland. Wait, but doesn't PETA euthanize thousands of cats and dogs every year? Where were we? Uh, oh yeah, Crossland is a bad man and deserves to be punished. Or does he? Whale dead after chowing down on 80 plastic bags. News of a whale's death coming out of Thailand this week shows us the sad, sad consequences of plastic waste. According to AFP, a male pilot whale was found struggling to stay alive in a canal in southern Thailand near the Malaysian border. A team of veterinary staff tried to help the wounded creature, but its condition got the best of him last Friday afternoon. An autopsy of the mammal revealed a gut-wrenching discovery. The AFP reports that officials found 80 plastic bags inside the whale's belly, weighing a combined 8 kilograms. Those chunks of plastic were likely consumed by the whale, which probably thought they were squid or other fish. A marine biologist told the AFP it's a huge problem, explaining that 300 marine animals die in Thailand each year after eating plastic. That number not only applies to pilot whales, but also sea turtles and dolphins. According to nonprofit organization Sea Turtle Conservancy, over 100 marine animals are killed annually due to plastic debris in the ocean. The Conservancy says that there's 100 million tons of plastic in the world's oceans. Sadly, these numbers are probably only going to get higher.